Okay. We're going to have a good time today. It's a great course. Who's ridden this course before? We've got a few people. All right. It is a lot of fun. You've been warming up on it. you got the little chicane up here just past the start-finish line. A hard right onto Broadway. Or left, that is. Left onto Broadway. Left onto 11th. Down the hill. Fast turn onto Georgia and back up here on 12th Street. Heidi Mingus, our chief referee. Anything to add? All right, we have a truck leaving the course, uh, getting everything cleared away for you, gentlemen. And we'll have a great race out here. Everybody from the PCW team, raise your hand. Let's recognize our hometown team, the host club out here, PCW Cycling Hyundai. Thank you. We are all clear. Listen for the whistle. We are underway with 45 laps of a racing right here. And attention riders, $10 to the leader of the next lap. We are uh, Explain Team Revolution, and we have a race here today, uh, women's cat 3-4s, um, and they're warming up right now. You'll see Chris here on the rollers, which are three pieces of cylinders that actually she has to balance on. It's more of a real feel, like you're actually out riding your bike, but you can stay in one spot and warm up. So she's getting her legs ready, kind of warming up. And then a Katarina there is on what they call a stationary trainer, which the back wheel is hooked into a, um, a flywheel back there that adds resistance, and therefore giving her a little bit of simulation of what it feels like to actually have gears on and riding in, uh, in the road. So they're both getting ready for uh, a good race today, and uh, enjoy the weather here in Sheboygan as well. So. And my name's Carrie. I'm the team director and a Cat 1 2 racer. Side of the course, the west side of the course, Nathan Longley. We've got yellow and red. We've got Marion Fischek as well as Longley, followed by Fischek and then maybe 294. Wow. Fischek right up there. Longley, though, extremely consistent. Number two was a 294. I thought I saw. Thought I saw Greg Stelton Polo, KMK out of Marquette, Michigan, in third place. We'll get that confirmed in a moment. But Nathan Longley, our overall winner, tells us, shows us why, our overall leader in a way, shows us why he may have just wrapped up the overall series with this win out here, 20 points. He had 20 series points for winning one of these criteriums. Congratulations, and I think we've had you up here before, have we not? Um, yesterday I was up, actually I didn't show up, but I got third place yesterday. Uh, it was my first day of Super Week, and uh, I think last year I had a third too. 
You had a third last year. Yesterday, your first day of Super Week. Now you're in the rhythm here. You know, you get to be famous at Super Week. You're even in the Category 4 race, you get third place. You get up here, get interviewed. And uh, anybody here you want to say hi to? Um, actually, my wife and my daughter, Hayden. She's 15 months old. They're, uh, they're here cheering for me. So. Well, and our uh, daughter, 15-month-old daughter, that's an inspiration out there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely uh, eases the pain every lap I look into her. And uh, it gives me some uh, power, definitely. <laughs> And, you know, it gives you something to be careful about, too. It's like, oh, now that you're a dad, you know, you, you can't get hurt and not be able to work, you know. And this is a risky sport. How do you, how do you reconcile those two things? Uh, actually, I come from uh, motor, uh, super bike racing, so um, this is a lot safer. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going 180 miles an hour out here, so, yeah, not too bad. Tell us a little bit about super bikes. Uh, well, I was, uh, I raced for about three years. I did uh, the pro event in Elkhart Lake, and uh, that was my last motorcycle race. And uh, I kind of did cycling uh, to get in shape for motorcycle racing, and it was kind of my next love. So this is a lot safer. Well, Greg, congratulations again. And, you know, you're talking about safety up here. I think maybe we had one guy fall down today. It's not too bad, but what do you think of the course? Um, it's a, they're, they're, both of them that I raced, uh, they're awesome courses, um, they're really well laid out, really, really nicely marked, and uh, so far so good, not, not uh, any incidents. Well, congratulations again, Greg, on your, uh, your third place today, and your prizes will be available about 15 minutes from now. Speak English. Okay, Marion. Fine. Marion is going to be shy here. He's originally from Poland, right? Originally from Poland. You're from Manitoba, Canada. And you come down here every year. Yeah, it's harder and harder. I'm 50 years old this year. And three years ago, I have a heart attack, and I can race any faster. You had a heart attack three years ago. Yeah, I had it three stents. And I you got three stents in there. You had a heart attack three years ago. And you, you took two or three preems today and second place. Congrats. Congrats. I mean, how do you do that? How do you get back in shape after a heart attack? How is dollar is not equal yet that I must make more money to... Ah. To pay for the gas. Oh, you know, you win some U.S. dollars down here. The U.S. dollar is still a little bit more valuable than the Canadian dollar? Yeah, 94 or something now. It's getting close. It's getting closer, about the closest it's been. Marion Fistek, congratulations. We'll have you here on the stand in just a second. In fact, go to Wisconsin for beans and barley. And Nathan, I think, four preems today, including the first preem of the race. Almost five. Almost five oh, preems. Five. Close one. I think Marion may have got you for that other one. I can't remember, but uh, you've got the win today. And do you have the overall victory yep. for this two-week series sewn up? Yep. Yeah, it's sewn up today. He didn't show up, so, you know. Bo Bo Thomas Bobo was not here, and that, that helps a little bit. But you had a huge points lead coming into this thing. You are Mr. Consistency. And two weeks of racing at the beginning, we call it the beginning level, amateur racing. How did you prepare for this series? Uh, just bike about an hour, hour and a half every day. That's about it. <laughs> so just consistency. The man is consistent on the race course. He's consistent with his training. And Nathan, you had no problem with the sprints today. You tried a breakaway, but the breakaway didn't work. Yeah, I was the only one who wanted to work. They seemed to want to go for preems more. So I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, you know, it, it doesn't matter to Nathan. It's like, you, you want to sit around and go for preems? Fine, I'll go for preems. I'll win more than anybody else. And then I'll out sprint you at the end. If you want to go for the preems and stretch things out, then we can break away and do it from there. The man will cater to his opponents either way. You want to sprint against me? Fine. You want to break away? That's fine. Nathan Longley, congratulations. We're going to see you tomorrow in Kenosha riding what category? Uh, hopefully category three. Definitely. Category three, the faster guys tomorrow. Nathan Longley, congrats. We've got a day of racing in Sheboygan and 14 locations total throughout southeast Wisconsin and northern Illinois today. The PCW Heritage Square Cycling Classic, we started at 10.30 with the beginning level amateurs, and these guys aren't really beginning level cyclists. They're going 45 laps, that's 35 miles. We'll end tonight with a race at six o'clock. The pros from six or seven countries represented going 100 kilometers, that is 80 laps out here, 62 miles on about a one mile course right here in Sheboygan, right past Allen Owls and all the other great businesses here in one of the great American cities. We're so glad to be here in southeast Wisconsin. Riders, this is category three for women. You are going 30 laps, 25 miles. You got 500 bucks in prizes at the end for the top 12. We've also got a nice little pile of cash creams right here. Cash creams, we'll be ringing those out during the race uh, from 10 up to about $25. Also, with every cream comes I believe socks. Do we have the socks? It doesn't say socks also, but I got the box of socks here, so I guess every cream comes with a couple sets of triathlete ultralight Ultimax socks by Wigwam and everything else. Oh, socks. <laughs> How cute.
You know, who, who's riding, who's riding the, the latest in bib shorts out here? Because we're going to talk about clothing for just a second. Latest in bib shorts right there. Those things are $150 to $200. You know why? Because of the fabric that's worn in them, the fabric in them, and the, and the, the moisture wicking stuff in them and the very special stuff, okay? Why not keep your feet comfortable? Anybody ever here, anybody here ever had trouble in a race because your feet were getting hot? Yes, okay. You want something? Six laps to go, no more free laps after six to go. The pit is behind you, the red SRAM tent down there, a legitimate mechanical failure beyond your control, like a broken bike part, a crash, or flat tire. That'll get you a free lap to get back into the race without any penalty. After six laps to go, no more free laps. Questions? Starting these things out this way. Ten bucks to the leader of the lap from Swoogie's Bar. Ten dollars just like that to the leader of the next lap to lap number one. Ten dollars is going to go out the first rider of the line here next time. Folks from Swoogie. All right, we're here with uh, Jerry, Jerry Vandekreek, uh, one of the organizers from this uh, Super Week for a number of years. Uh, Jerry, can you tell us a little bit of background information over the years, uh, how many years? Well, we've been doing this, this is our 18th year. Um, it started as a, a one-shot deal, which was trying to see what was going to happen as far as the, the Heritage Square area. We had just redone the old business area, and it was a way to get people over to the business district here and let them know what was going on in Sheboygan. So, 18 years now we've been doing it. It was only supposed to be one. Now, to put on an event like this, uh, it takes a lot of volunteers. You want to talk about that? Yeah, we have probably over 100 volunteers between people going out to get preems, uh, corner guards, set up, tear down, a little bit of everything. So, it's close to 100 volunteers that we have just to get the race going and race day and then clean up afterwards. Now, an event like this, it takes a lot of preparation that do you set up starting for now for next year? Well, it's a little difficult because they don't set the dates until sometime in January or February. Uh, a lot of the setup of the, the signage and that you see is done by the, the, the International Classic themselves. Ours is more the, uh, the local stuff, uh, getting corner guards, uh, taking care of trash, you know, some of the cleanup things, set up things in, in that manner. So. Uh, we start talking about it right away. Um, there's been talk about a different course, taking it out of the Heritage Square area, moving it downtown. I don't know if that'll happen. That's not what we at Heritage Square would like, but you know, we don't control all of those things. If the Classic wants to go elsewhere in town, if they think they can draw a bigger crowd, we'll have to deal with it. Now, talking about the, the local merchants, uh, explain what the premiums are all about. Well, premiums are basically lap prizes. Uh, premiums are... Uh, we are one of the largest, I guess, uh, in dollars and, and number of premiums on the entire race circuit of 19 or 20 races. Uh, the riders love coming here because of the premiums. Um, sometimes we have one place premiums where it's just the leader of a pack or leader of the race. It could be the, the leader of the pack, maybe not the leader of the race. We could have three, three, pay, three place premiums, um, different dollar amounts, merchandise prizes, things like that. But they're basically prizes for leading or uh, the fastest lap or what have you. Now this year it, it appears to be the, the weather is going to be very cooperative. It's uh, quite warm. Uh, how do you think that's going to affect the, the crowd or the riders? Well, as long as it doesn't rain, the crowd should be great. The humidity, hopefully that'll drop a little bit, maybe later on today. If it starts raining, then you have a problem. If it's 
brief showers, light showers, it's not so much of a problem. Yeah, heavy downpours. Uh, these guys race in the rain. They don't. They don't. Wait, I shouldn't say guys. Guys and gals. They race in the rain. Um, you know, if there's a thunderstorm, lightning, and the like, they'll stop the race. But um, we've had one year where the tornado sirens went off and they had to stop the race. But for the most part, races go on until about eight o'clock tonight. Very, very good. Thank you. Chase going now. What is that? Christina Moore, I believe it was, out of Elgin, Oklahoma. Horse is clear, though. 20 bucks on the line right now. Five laps to go. Five laps to go. Ten riders. $25. $25 to the leader of the next lap. 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 The U.S. Bank. And who won that for you? That was a win. Followed by Moore. That one to go. And here comes 459 winner Christian Meshberg, our overall leader. One lap to go, one lap to go. Christian Meshberg, the overall leader. Done. Yes, it is our overall leader. 459, 474 in second, I believe. 459, Christian Meshberg, our overall leader, winning here in Sheboygan. As the race makes a very interesting situation out of the final turn. Carly Gendron and Kristen Meshberg, Lions, Illinois. Stick around, Carly, because I think we can get a picture. Kristen, come on over here. You're, you're very identifiable in a Flatlandia jersey, and we talked about the Flatlandia. I don't think it has anything to do with the terrain, though. What is Flatlandia? Actually, it does. We're, we're from Chicago, so we don't have any hills to practice on, so we, and we thought it would be a plan the old Flandria team, and so it kind of... Sounded like a vodka brand or something to me, you know, but it, yeah, it sounds good. So Flatlandia is the name of the club from the Chicago area. I don't know you've got your, your hometown listed as Lions, Illinois, so I know you didn't like Cedarburg. It was kind of hilly out there. Oh, you love Cedarburg. Did we? Yeah, somewhere out here. I'm, I'm talking to the wrong person now, aren't we? Let me look at Cedarburg. Women, Kristen Meshberg. Oh, yeah, you won there. Won in Cedarburg where it was hilly. So the Flatlandia lady didn't mind the hills in Cedarburg. Yesterday, how, how were things for you and Howard? Uh, hot. It was very hot yesterday, and it was, it was just hard and hot. Well, you know, it was hard and hot, and it was, uh, a, little cooler, Howard, it was uh, a little bit cooler on the final lap here. It was a little bit cooler on the final lap here. It was a little bit cooler on the final lap here. And you were up there near the front, one lap to go, and it starts raining. What happened out there? Well, there were two women up the front, and I really thought I, they were going to hold us off, but... Uh, once again, I thought, you know, when in doubt, lead it out. You know, that happened lap or turn number four, the last turn of the race, Kristen. Three or four, maybe five riders hit the pavement or went over the curb, and you were already in front of them. Yeah, the terrible sound to hear, but at least it's better to hear it behind you than in front. Hearing it in front of you is that's one of the most frightening noises in all of cycling, is hearing the sound of that, that crash, that metal pedal. And uh, the bikes hitting the ground in front of you. They were all behind you there. And it started to rain. What was your thought? Was your thought to get to the very front because of the rain? Or, you know, of course, you want to be to the front to win the race, but you don't want to be too far to the front with a mile to go. Absolutely. I didn't want to be in front because of the rain. I wanted to take my line in the corner. I didn't want to uh, be sliding around at all. So it's definitely something I was thinking about. Well, you kept the rubber side down, as did. Carly Gendron and Christine Redker. Kristen Meshberg, you maintain your overall lead, of course. And hey, it's not raining. Anybody out there with a the camera? There's the camera. Let's go out, get the podium shot here. First, second, and third. 
as our masters come by. Uh, handling the hills in Cedarburg and uh, the relatively mild terrain here in Sheboygan today out of Lions, Illinois. Kristen Meshberg, your champion here in Sheboygan. She's the overall leader. Hands up in glory as the crowd goes wild. Okay. From here in Sheboygan, we went on to Kenosha, into Milwaukee for the great Downer Avenue bike race, a fantastic crowd there, and of course finishing up in Whitefish Bay, just north of the city of Milwaukee. Right here in Sheboygan, we had Category 3 and 4 women, our amateur women with some of the uh, local flavor, some local flavor added by our Sheboygan rider, number 13, Alicia Hildebrand, riding for PCW Cycling, and you can see the PCW riders in those distinctive yellow and blue jerseys. Other Sheboygan riders include in our Category 4 men race, the Category 4 men's race, the beginning level amateurs, number 37, William Street. Or actually number, oh well. Number 162, William Street of Sheboygan, adding some local color in the blue and yellow of PCW Cycling in our amateur beginning level amateur race here at 10.30 this morning. Oh, well. Keep on forgetting we're doing a week from now. Sorry, I'm a little rusty on this stuff. And let's see. Let's talk about the pro race. Actually, in the four and in the category in the category four five race, you know these guys are sometimes in their first year of riding, and we've seen a lot of riders develop from the first year into the intermediate level or the, the good regional amateur status category three riders, and we even have a young man Cole House from Oneida who started as a category four rider four years ago, and he is now riding with the pros and the top elite riders in our 2007 International Cycling Classic. Nathan Longley of Beans and Barley for Category 4 and 5. He is our overall leader after 13 days of racing. And these guys are the beginning level. They've been doing 13 days in a row. Nathan Longley of the Beans and Barley team out of West Allis has been riding every day, and that consistency has him in first place overall. 29 years now, Eddie Van Guys. He's originally from Chicago, now lives in Long Beach, California. He comes out here to announce the pro race, and in the evening race, he's talking about Marco Rios of Mexico, the overall leader in our professional leagues out here. Jonathan Cantwell of Australia in second overall, and a man from Lawrence, Kansas, originally from Denmark, Brian Jensen, a very strong former long distance runner. So we've got riders from triathlons, running, riders from so many different countries. Top American native is Kaylee Leo Grande, former overall leader as of as of our race here in Sheboygan, the man from the Rock Racing Team from Rancho Cucamondo, California, was in fifth place overall. And these guys get points for their finishing order every night. And really right now as of Sheboygan, 26 points out of 178, 26 points separating the top five. So that is how close the competition is. And then riding for a new team this year, he's out of Illinois. Second place in yesterday, we're calling the Druber, Mark Schwartz and Druber. Where's Mark? Is he here today? Don't see him. How about yesterday's winner? I know he is yesterday's winner, and he won the day before in Cedarburg, breaking away from a breakaway. A man with a lot of endurance in his legs out of Waukesha, a contractor, married 28 years with five kids, three grandkids. <laughs> he won in Waukesha, he won ballroom dancing lessons, and he lists that as his new hobby. Won yesterday, won the day before. Please welcome for Team Mac, Mr. Mark McGean. And a man who he's so shy, he, he doesn't know that I know this, but we're going to bring him up here, have him raise his hand, and give a good congratulations on making it 50 years through life as a bike racer. Please welcome from California, Fess and Los Obispos, Chris Black from Morgan Stanley. Chris Black, 50 years old today. How he got that old in this sport? He's out here with all these youngsters in their 40s. We'll see how he does. And these California guys in the rain, we'll find out. Gentlemen, we are scheduled for 50 laps. That is 40 miles. 50 laps, 40 miles. 
finishing prize list totals $750 for 18 Blazers. We've got, we've got a nice little slew of cash creams. And remember that with every cash cream, or almost every cash cream, goes a pair or two of a triathlete ultralight. Open X with warm socks, special athletic socks help keep your feet cooler. You may not need to keep your feet cooler today, but say tomorrow, Josh, it's hot. You'll be lucky if you have some of these socks because everybody's had hot feet out in this hot sport before there's no fun. So keep your feet cooler with the warm socks. And I think we're just about ready to go, Amy. Eh? We are underway in the rain. Careful out there, gentlemen, and have a great time. It's not too hot. Kind of refreshing to ride in the rain, of course. Most of my, all of my recent career was spent as a citizen of Portland, Oregon. And we get used to riding in the rain, the racing in the rain, criterion. The criteria to be a great bike racer is speed, endurance, and great bike handling ability. A criterium requires all three in order to be a winner out here, and you'll see why when you watch these guys going 25 to 30 miles an hour through the corners, elbow to elbow, wheel to wheel. And why do they follow so closely? It's because a rider at the very front at race speed, 25 to 35 miles an hour, is working 20 or even 30% harder than the riders right behind him. That lead rider is working as a wind block. He's creating a little tailwind for the guys behind him. And the farther back you are in the pack, the more tailwind you've got generated for you. So look at the guys in the back of the pack. Sometimes on these long straightaways, they're not working real hard, but you watch them go through those corners, that pack gets stretched out very thin, single file usually, to find the optimum high speed line through a turn. So the guys at the back then getting strung out single file, it's like being at the end of a slinky. They've got a sprint to catch back up and get into contention when they come out of the turn. So there's a compromise here. Some riders like to sit near the back out of the wind. Other riders like to be near the front so they have control all the speed they want through those corners. Go. 
Nine, Nine laps left. left. We've got it. A little bit of conversation out there, or at least a lecture from Clark Reedy about something. Now it is zero to go. Here comes Emery up the left side. Here comes Emery up the left side, and it is going to be Chris. 828, 828. Is that man on the lead a lap now? Yes, he is. It is Chris Black. Let's bring him up here. Black to get up here, too, and Chris Halverson. This man, I think, has gone faster today than anyone else. It's just a matter of where you start your going faster than anyone else. This guy completed the course today faster than anyone else by having a great lead out of the turn. Let's, let's walk him up to the stage right now. Get Chris Halverson up here, too. Here comes Chris. But second place, Brent Emery, Menominee Falls, owner of Emery Cycle and Fitness. Brent, you are coming up the left side five miles an hour faster than anybody else but at Bell Lap you were in fourth spot right there yeah I should have been a little bit better place but uh, Chris got a tremendous lead out on the back stretch he made a fabulous move what a great birthday present happy birthday Chris we've got two Chris's in the top three up here Chris Black we're gonna have a word with you here's Chris Halverson our overall leader and was third place today. Chris Black, we're gonna get back to you too. You're gonna spend a couple minutes up here. I hope you're prepared. Nice and cool out there with a little bit of rain and you know, not bad bike handling for a Southern cowboy. Well, you know, I uh, kind of like the rain a little bit. It's a little slippery. Um, I had a little problems. I had got a support wheel and it didn't corner quite as good as mine did. So I was having to back off as I came through turn three and four. I couldn't go as fast as I wanted to, but uh, my friend Tom Gates from Grand Fondo gave me the best lead out. We were going so fast down the backside, I didn't think I was even gonna make the turn in turn three. And uh, I knew all I had to do was hang on. And I could hear Brent coming behind me, and I was just hoping that I didn't run out of room. And it was, it was a matter of room today, Chris, as you came across the line, it was getting closer and closer. Brent might have been within a bike length or two of you going about five miles an hour faster. But, you know, you talk about the lead out you got going down to back search. Now, was that a Morgan Stanley teammate or just somebody you know from California? Uh, Tom Gates he lives in Tennessee now. He's a former Southern Cal guy. He used to ride with uh, um, the guy who I was the unofficial lead out guy for for a long time, Butch Stinton. And uh, Tom's just a really fast guy. And... Uh, he came up and decided to give me a birthday present today. So he gave me the lead out down the backside. And, uh, you know, Brent's faster than me, but uh, I got there first. <laughs> Smarter, and you got the great lead out. Chris, stick, stick with us here. Here's the other Chris. Chris Halverson the animal! is in first place overall because of consistency. Sometimes he wins, but he's most often... You know, all, almost always in the top five. And Chris, today he had a big sprint out there. You could break away, you can sprint, and today you had a couple of big guys to take on. Oh, uh, well, we, we tried to get into a uh, breakaway uh, several times, but the, uh, there's just so much strength in this 40-plus uh, field. Uh, like I say, I just want to uh, also congratulate Chris on a happy birthday, and that's a nice present, and a uh, good sprint from Brent, and uh, just, just love racing with all these guys. <laughs> I write his note. She's never down. 
and then he'll write his number on the wheel. Uh, we're here with Bonnie, uh, one of the race officials for Super Week. Bonnie, could you tell us about what you do here as an official, and you, right now you're in the pit area? My job is when a rider comes in, um, if they get a flat tire, if they break something on their bike, they come in, they let us know what their problem is. Um, and then Todd or Jose will get their bike fixed, and we'll get them back in in the next lap. If they have a crash, sometimes we may have four or five guys that will come in. Um, I write their numbers down so we'll know who was involved in the crash in case anything comes up later. And um, then we make sure they go back out with the field. Um, and they'll have them out, and even on this shorter course, which is I'm guessing about a minute and a half to a minute 40, they'll have them ready to go before the field gets back. You know, when a rider uh, crashes or has an event with their bike, uh, how many laps do they have to get into the pits? Um, they try to get here as quickly as possible, but as soon as they come in the pit, they've only got one lap, and then I have to get them back out. Now, what, what types of things are you doing to the bike uh, when they come in? Um, sometimes it's a flat tire. Sometimes it could be a broken spoke. It could be um, a broken seat, uh, seat collar. Uh, we've had them come in, um, and uh, the handlebars have been broken from the crash. So they'll take a bike down off the car, set it up, and have them out. And they'll have the bike set up and ready to go in a minute. Now what are you doing now when you're writing numbers on? I'm keeping track of the race so that if somebody comes out, if there's a break, and this happens all the time in the pros, there will be a break, and they'll mount me four guys in the break. And they'll come by, and then there's three guys in the break. And then the one guy comes into the pit, and he goes, I'm in the break. And I'm like... Yep, you were in the break, and so they'll, they'll come back around and we send them right back out with the break. We know who's in the field, um, that way if they come by, and we know they weren't at the front and they weren't off the back, but they were in the field, so when the field comes back, we send them right back out with the field. Uh, how did you get involved in this, and, and were you a rider yourself? Um, well, I've done mountain bike racing, but I've never raced on the road. My uh, oldest son was started uh, racing at the track in Frisco, Texas, and they needed more officials, and so I went, I'm here all the time anyway. So I took the class and started officiating at the track, and then he started going to road races. So I, I thought, you know, I'm going to be at the, I'm going to be on the, uh, the road with him. Might as well work at the race, make some money while we're there, help pay for, for the travel, um, and that's how I started. Is your son here? And he is not here now. Um, he's going to college full time and working full time, and he just moved from Dallas to Houston. Anything else you want to add? Oh, uh, come out and watch the races. It's, it's a lot of fun. you got to come watch the pros. They're fast. All right, Todd, uh, you're the uh, race support for the International Super Week. Uh, you want to talk about uh, what you do, and, and then we'll talk about this bike in particular. Sure. Uh, 
Jose Alcala and I are what are uh, referred to as neutral race mechanics uh, or neutral support mechanics. Uh, what we do is we go to pro and amateur cycling events. We're part of a team, uh, about 15 mechanics. Uh, we have five of these Volvo XC70 uh, cars provided for us by Volvo. Uh, and we bring bicycles, tools, and equipment along uh, to help keep a rider in a race uh, if they have a mechanical, uh, mechanical problem uh, during the event. Uh, so that, that rider's race is not over. Uh, we travel to about a hundred events a year, uh, the Super Week being one of them, and in fact being the longest and most grueling that we're uh, that we're in. Um, but uh, you know, beyond being a lot of work, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we get to travel around and uh, and and see the racing and and really be a part of it, which is kind of exciting. Let's talk about this new. Uh bike you have in front of you? Sure. This is an Orbea time trial bike. Orbea is a small manufacturer from Spain uh, who have in the last few years uh, started distributing bicycles to North America. Uh, it's a carbon fiber frame. Uh, the bicycle in total weighs about 17 and a half pounds. Uh, it's got uh, the Zip uh, 808 carbon wheels. Okay. We good? All right. Um, the bike is an Orbea time trial bike. It's uh, a small manufacturer in Spain who have just recently in the last few years uh, gotten distri distribution in North America. Uh, and so they're helping us out with our program, providing bicycles uh, that we can take along to the races and offer as loaners uh, to a rider who has a crash or a breakage. The bike as it stands now weighs about 17 and a half pounds. Uh, it has a SRAM uh, force and rival component kit uh, designed specifically for time trial. The highlight of the new component kit uh, is these carbon fiber shift levers and brake levers. Uh, they're designed to be lightweight and aerodynamic. Uh, previous to this, uh, the shift and brake levers that were available for this style of bike were, were heavy and were uh, an old design uh, originally developed for touring bicycles, for bicycles carrying a heavy load and, and spending uh, days and weeks on an unsupported tour. Uh, so this is the first kit of this type that has been developed specifically for this discipline of cycle racing. Um, they don't use this type of bike here? Event? No, uh, there is no time trial in this event. Um, this is uh, what's called an omnium. Uh, time trial is, is usually involved in stage racing. Stage racing is uh, a series of races where every rider must make a time cut, must finish within a, a, a maximum time to be able to continue on the next day. This being an omnium means that uh, riders may pick and choose uh, the races they want to participate in. Uh, they can take a day off uh, or race the entire series. Uh, there are still points and uh, prizes uh, for each individual day as well as an overall prize at the end. So a rider in contention for the overall prize, obviously, it's in their best interest to race the entire series.
Wilcox. Is this Cameron Wilcox or is this Cameron Wilcox? The champion today, category three, right here in Sheboygan, Cameron. And we're going to go ahead. Cameron Wilcox, we're going to ask our guys to sit down and relax just for a second. But Cameron, Washburn, Wisconsin, and you go ahead and sit down too. What, are you tired? It was only 50 miles out there with two other guys. Yeah, I'm kind of tired. You know, I think I've interviewed you before. You know, this man, he's sort of soft-spoken. He's pretty just kind of very simple and straightforward about things. But today, Cameron, I, I don't think you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty hard out there and uh, I'm kind of tired. I mean, you guys put it to him. Yeah, uh, we did the same move last year, actually, and I won last year in the four fives. Uh, oh, so in the beginning group, but now you're up a level of competition and you're going about 20 miles farther. 20 miles faster, too. Uh, you know, I've had a rough Super Week, actually. Uh, I had a little higher hopes than I ended up with, so I wanted to really rock it today. Well, you rocked it definitely here, Cameron. Uh, and you're from, let's see, Washburn, Wisconsin for Endeavor Cycling. And where exactly is Washburn? It's up by Ashland, Wisconsin, on Lake Superior. So you're up there in a beautiful place for training, and uh, you know, not a lot of population up here. You got training partners up there? No, not really. They all went to college. <laughs> they all went to college, and you're racing your bike. And, uh, ah, there we go. Most of the preems, gentlemen, most of the preems are going to be available with the Franklin Mint, but I get to hand this to Dan Teeters today. Or where's Carol? Is Carol here? Maybe she should hand it to Dan Teeters. She collected most of it. Carol, come on over. Is Carol here? Uh, if Carol is still here, we'll give this to Dan Teeters. So we've got second place up here today, Michael Klapperick. And I guess that, that Mountain Dew does you some good out there. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you're kind of tired right now, and, and things are things are hot and humid out here, but what what do you put in that water bottle? I talk about the hammer, heat, drink, you know, we talk about Mountain Dew, we talk about all sorts of energy drinks, sport drinks, or just plain water. What's your secret? Shackley Performance. Shackley, okay, and I'll go a whole other brand, to, to, a whole other brand all together, and we remember, we remember, um, I'm trying to remember the names here. Oh, they rode for Shackley. He won so many times. I had another name and it just escaped me, but we had Shackley team out here and they won a lot of races out here, but we use we use sports drinks. They replace the energy as you go. And you had 50 miles today. Uh, you went through a lot of calories. Yeah, yeah. We were working pretty hard. Cam Cameron was pulling hard through here and I took the back stretch. And, uh, the other guy was filling in between. The other guy, the other guy, who is that other guy? Come on over here, other guy. Other guy all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah, Vanguard Media Group. This is Eric Thompson. Well, Eric, thank you for, for adding kind of a national flair to things today, all the way up from, uh, from Utah. I know Patrick Fossey was third in one of the other races, so your team's doing pretty well. Uh, Patrick's kind of a local here. He's from Sheboygan Falls originally, and we thought we'd come out and visit mom and dad, and it's been an awesome races. Wow, so you've got a host family here. Absolutely, it makes it uh, that, much, that much better for us. Well, you know, we, we came into this thing, you had four riders in the break. I'm gonna put my crowd frame down right here for now. We had four riders in a break to begin with. It was uh, Brian Caker of, of uh, the Beans and Barley team, one of our local riders, actually helped start that thing, Eric, and then he dropped off after a little while. Yeah, these two guys started putting the hurt on both of us, and I just barely was able to hang on and had to make them pull through a couple times and then uh, just hung on and kept watching the lap counter go down. All right, so you kept on watching that lap counter go down, and, and Brian, Brian Wilcox, we, we, we came up, I mean Cameron, Brian Wilcox, Cameron Wilcox, you saw the back of the pack there at uh, probably five or ten laps to go. You're coming up behind everybody. I was thinking about catching them, but uh, that complicates things. <laughs> you know, that, that does. It's a very interesting situation because this guy here has a couple of strong teammates in the race. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, Michael, if you have some teammates in the race out there. I didn't see any other Mountain Dew jerseys. Any other Endeavor guys in the race? Yeah, I had one teammate, Pete Lawrence. Uh, I think he was probably working for me today. <laughs> yeah, he was probably helping that break stay out. But what if you would have lapped the field, who you've got, you would have gone in there. 
and he would have been looking for your teammates to lead you out to the front to help beat the other guy, and that would have been a very interesting situation. Why did not, why didn't you lap the field? You know, I think we were just kind of a little lightheaded and decided just to just hang on and, and just finish it out between the three of us. All right, so Eric, you, you got third place today. Congratulations. Take the spot up there. And uh, Cameron Wilcox, not to be confused with Brian, who's a fictitious character in my mind. Cameron Wilcox, Team Endeavor, and Michael Klapperick, first, second, and third today in an epic 50-miler. Let's have fourth place come out here as well. Fourth place, come on out here. Cameron, or Kenneth Stats, there we go, Ken Stats. Ken Stats in fourth place. You, you were out there solo for a couple of creams, and you went out there solo for fourth place, escaping a very rabid bunch behind you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. I, I normally don't feel this strong during a race, uh, and I have to redeem myself. I am a sprinter, so next year I'll have to sprint it out for uh, maybe up with these guys, hopefully. <laughs> but i got to move up a few levels before I can stay with those guys. You consider yourself a sprinter, but you soloed for about 60 bucks or something like that in premiums and fourth place in the race. Wasn't the smartest thing to do, but yeah. <laughs> hey, it worked out okay. Well, you think you're a sprinter then, Ken. Come on over here. Burt Cross, Austin, Texas. And we're going to get Dan Teeters up here as well. But Burt Cross, early in the race, you were saying, where's that $50 premium? And I announced a $15 premium. And you looked like you just won the world championships when you came across the line winning 15. I messed up big time. <laughs> I heard it wrong. So I thought it was 50, but it's 15, so. I, I kind of wondered about that, but there there were some other premiums at 20 or a 30 or 35 later on that uh, you're out there for. Well, I ran out of water, so I was just trying to save it at the end. I hope that break would come back, but it didn't, so. Well, you know, we had three guys out the front, a lot of chasing. Then uh, Ken went out there for fourth place, and the field comes around the corner. Describe the last turn from your perspective. It was nice and clean. It was real nice and clean. I took the corner first, and I just went up the hill, and then just came around, just hammered it really hard. How did you get first in the corner when everybody in that 40 wider pack wanted to be at that corner first? How'd you get there? I just got to fight for it, and I wanted it bad, so I went for it. All right, is it all elbows and shoulders and a little headbutting or something like that? How do you do it? I don't know. That's, that's my job. I'm a sprinter, so that's how you have to do it. The man from Austin, Texas, puts on a show for us today. Fifth place today, Burt Cross. Here's the picture, but I want Dan Teeters to join these guys. Dan Teeters, Kohler, Wisconsin, $103 crowd cream today. Right over here next to Burt. And here are the top riders. In our race today, Dan Teeters for the $103 crowd cream. Burt Cross, Austin, Texas in fifth. Ken Stats, Wisconsin Rapids in fourth, soloing for that one. Third place, Eric Tons from Salt Lake City. In second, Michael Claprick of St. Cloud. And first, Cameron Wilcox, Washburn, Illinois. Okay, quick doc. Quick draw doc, I'm gonna call you. Sean, come on out here. Subbing for Mike Garrison is Sean from 10 Speeds. Let's get ready to rumble! All right, Sean, thank you very much. Thank you, Doc Reese. Fans, give him a big hand. Oh, we got an exciting field here. Yeah, day what? Day 14 of Super Week. We'll be there in about five minutes. Slow down a little bit. Slow it up. Life's too short. Slow it down a little bit.
Sheboygan rushing to the line. May 14 is super week. Here it is, the PCW Cycling Heritage Square. Classic, give a big hand, your champion.